Welcome to this podcast is making me thirsty. The number one destination for Seinfeld fans. This is two up and two down. Here's our producer, Chris, to start us off. All right. Welcome back. We're going into what you guys, one of your favorite uh, seasons, season eight is the chicken roaster. And Tony, what do you got for your first up? Yeah, it is season eight. uh, But I will say this is one of my favorites from season eight. Um, it's my, it might be my top. I don't know. It's, it's up there. It's probably top three season of the episode. Um, I know it's a crowd favorite. I feel like this and the Merv Griffin episode, everyone likes. I mean, Pink Hats love this. Love Merv. I feel like they're kind of similar in a way. I have both of my head kind of similar-ish. It's a Berg and Schaefer. Uh, listen, we got to give two ups. We got to give two downs. Um, my first up, and, you know, my partner's been telling how much I've been knocking Jerry. So my first up is a is a Jerry uh Jerry doing Kramer when they switch places. I give Jerry credit on that one. I think he's great. I'm stressed. Uh, the, the whole ice cream talking to Bob Sacamano last night. Uh, you know, Mr. Marble's freaking me out. I know it's a big one. I gave yeah. a lot there, but I'm I'm just telling you, Jerry becoming Kramer. I know it's a big up. It encompasses a lot, but I got to give it all because that's why it's enough. It was just one of those things it wouldn't be. But, you know, Jerry does a slide in. Jerry does I'm stressed. We all love that. Uh, I got to get that out there. I'm glad I went first because that's my first up is, is Jerry. Jerry being Kramer. That's my first up. No, yeah, great. Great up there because I also noted that as well. Uh, Jerry turning into Kramer. So good one. Uh, Chris, over to you. What's your uh, first up? You took three of my ups there, all in one. But here we go. Bergen Schaefer, 34 million people watched it. Obviously, it's funny. You mentioned. <laughs> I can't. What up, Jerry being Kramer? That's the up. You mentioned. Uh, three seeds. You mentioned this was similar. <laughs> you mentioned this is similar to Merv Griffiths. But Merv well, Griffiths, you gave an F. I mean, <laughs> so we'll see what his grade is. <laughs> so here we go. By far, my favorite scene in this episode is. When he bumps into Seth, okay, and Seth, his old college buddy, and Jerry tells him, he's, "Oh, I got a big meeting." And he goes, "Blow it off!" I mean, Remember I, I don't know how many times I've said that. You know, yeah. Remember Poli Sci? Uh, how's Much- Mucci? Uh, the whole thing. He loves Seth. You know, obviously, they, <laughs> then they're getting dinner, and you know, a oh, big Citibank meeting. I, I think that was the bank, and uh, oh, that's right now. He's like, "You blew that off," so. Blow it off, Jerry meeting Seth on the street. First up, yeah, great, great stuff there too. Uh, yeah, it's a good up, uh, Tony. Over to you again. What's your second up? Yeah, that's a class. Uh, that's unbelievable up. We've all been there, just like yeah, you know what, man. We go, you know, love it, love it. Um, I crossed that one off my list. Um, my my next up, and and you know what, I think he might. Uh, my partner here might grill me on this one because I don't think he likes it probably if I had to guess, but I got a chunk a lot of it actually. And, and this is a season of the episode. I'm not finding a lot. So I'm giving it up here. The three-way call, Elaine and, and the guy calls it and Jerry's there and they kind of cut it all. And then Jerry's still sitting there and hello. And they kind of blocked them all off and Jerry's still on the phone and they're all gone. And it's just Jerry on the phone on a hole, just waiting. <laughs> I know. I, that's the exact what I was saying. I knew that would give that reaction. That's why I said it. Because listen, we're, we're what's the three way? I remember. I remember the black screen. No, it's like it's, it's like, like with if which the, the yeah. president. Yeah, the the uh, the, 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 the auditor calling Elaine and then Jerry has she's to put Jerry on hold. They show all three of them. And then Elaine just hangs yeah, up, and they keep it on Jerry. And Jerry's like, "Hello, we've all been there. Am I still on hold?" And no one clicks back to you. You're kind of just like, "What's going on?" Listen, I'm finding up just with the name of the game is here. I'm gonna give that an up. I get a chuckle and another Jerry up. By the way, two ups for Jerry. There you go. All right, that one was a little bit out of left field, but you know, hey, an ups and up. So there you go, uh, Chris. Over to you. What's your second up? Uh, yeah, listen, he's getting very uh, deliberate now. Try to help lift Jerry. I get it. We see what we're doing before, here. before the conversation. But, uh, all right. You know, you said Jerry as uh, being Jerry. I liked Kramer as Jerry. I, I think that was really well done. Um, giving advice to Elaine and then, you know, meeting uh, uh, George and Muggs. I think he, that's a shame. The whole thing, he played Jerry very well. I think that was a, a fun little bit. Uh, I'm dipping into yours a little bit, but. The old swappage of those two, 
Um, obviously, he didn't do his hair like Jerry, like you know, like Jerry did with Kramer. But Kramer was pretty good, pretty good as um, as, as I mean, sorry, Kramer was pretty good as Jerry, as kind of straight man giving advice. Uh, a nice chuckle uh, for season eight. So that's my my second up for the chicken roast. No, absolutely, yeah. The, the fact that they kind of switched personalities because of the red menace going on. Uh, yeah, definitely an up in, in my book, too. So um, now we're going to do downs. Uh, Tony, again, we're going to start with you. What's your first down? I agree with that one, by the way, just to throw that out there. Um, my first down is, uh, and I, I never liked this, and they do this a lot, especially later seasons. They do this a lot in later seasons, and I, I don't like it. And this is one of the epitomes of it, is when Elaine takes George to the fucking ladies' apartment. Uh, you know, holding his ear, the whole. Uh, I don't like this whole Elaine intimidates. I, I never liked it. They, 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 they really build that up later on in these seasons. Um, and, and this is one of the. This is like peak it. If you if you get my drift, like this is one of the worst examples of it. When Elaine goes to the chick's house, and by the way, we should get that chick on uh, the podcast. You know, like pull, pulls George's ear. Uh, he's an idiot. You know, he left the hat there, whatever. Uh, never liked that scene. I, I don't like when Elaine Heather. Like, her name's Heather on the show. Yes, yeah. I don't like Elaine bullying George, and this is like the peak of it, in my opinion. Never liked that scene. Um, and and that's my down. That's my down right there. Six to sing. Yeah, yeah I, I can see that. So yeah, very good down there. Uh, Chris, over to you. What's your first down? Yeah, I do have a piggyback off that. I want to hold it back for my grade, but it, for me, we we talk about cold opens a lot. This is another one, okay? You know, haggling over juice and, mm-hmm. and price and, you know, pasta should be negotiable. Guys, just give the give the 60 seconds back to commercials if this is what we're going to do. It, it, it's unrelated to the show. It, it's it's unrelated to anything. Right. I, you know, I'm assuming it's just, you know, Berg and Schaefer wanting to get their opinion out there. I, I don't know. Uh, guys, you guys, welcome to the show. Any day, and maybe again, and you know what? It'd be great to have you on the show because I'd love to get an explanation on somebody's cold opens. So, for me, the cold opens, uh, you know, say it's not set the tone for season eight. They set the tone for episodes. When you turn on an episode, you want to be able to keep it on. You want to know what it's a, that it's what it's about. And I would have no idea this chicken roaster if I started, you know, haggling about juice. Big miss. Right, first down, first down. All right, good Absolutely. point. I totally forgot about that cold open. And uh, like, yeah, you haggle over big ticket items, not stupid small stuff like juice. So yeah, good good point there. Uh, Tony, over to you. What's your uh, second down? First of all, amazing. I had written down cold open as a down. I was about to give it. And then I, I didn't write down what it was and I had forgotten. I literally forgot, but I knew I hated it. So I started looking on my phone to try and find what the hell the cold open was, and he just took it, and I'm glad he did because I wrote it down, and I forgot. I, that's how bad it was. I didn't, I didn't recognize it. To his point, though, it made me think about something. The Brady Bunch, every episode of the Brady Bunch, the first scene, I, I can tell you what the whole episode is about from the first scene, that first, like, literally cold open of the Brady Bunch, you know what the show's about, to his point. And I think when we talk to Bergen Schaefer, they're going to tell us, I feel like, I feel like, Larry David's writing early on got these later writers to think about these cold open because he had some of this kind of mundane conversation, but they were good back then. They were a little bit different. Now they just do this bad cold opens. I digress. Well, My, yeah, yeah go ahead. And, and to your point, because in their earlier episodes, at least Jerry's stand up had something to do with right. what the show was all yes, about. Exactly. Which the point premise of the show. Had yeah. Nothing yeah. to do or right. to set up what what the rest of the episode was going to be. There were non sequiturs that didn't make any sense and weren't funny. And, and but hey, you're, you're chasing pink hat fans. You're chasing radiance. Right. It's, it's hard to argue. Right. Uh, hence show about nothing and whatever. Yada, yada. Here we are. <laughs> uh, my second down is, and this is kind of a little bit of a bigger one, I guess, but I don't know if you, I don't think you gave this one. Uh, and this is a theme in season eight, obviously we've done this a hundred times. It's a lane. <laughs> I mean, the expenses, talking to the guy, can I fire you? And I'm the president, can I do whatever I want? And, you know, using the water pick on the plant and all of a sudden the hat's like $10,000 hat. I mean, the whole thing. I mean, they're just finding Elaine's stuff. Um, 
I mean, that's what I wrote down. We're a lane with expenses. That's my down. Visiting you know, Peterman. Well, you know what? When I go in there, he gave two ups. I thought I thought the Peterman apocalypse now kind of vibe. I'll give them that maybe, but well, he was an up. I'll give it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I I thought that was yeah. kind of nice, the the Peterman. Uh, but but Elaine in general in this episode is just bad, and, and that's why it was really just those little expenses thing. And she's the president. And, Falls flat as most of her storylines do later in years, and so that's my down. Uh, Chris, what do you got for your second down? Homage. Seinfeld's better than that. Create your own homage, okay? Do it so a lot listen. Later years. So here's the thing, and I'm kind of weaving into some of what you you touched on the kind of just the Elaine and George dynamic. You know, talk about this a lot. Those two can bring down an episode, and they were both downs, okay? Because they were together a lot. Like, why? Why is Elaine with George expensing things? Like, why? She, like, why did she invite him? And I forget about that. The whole, and I get it. We all love the commercial. Bye, man. And like, that was just a, a little too much. And again, that girl clearly added George Lee. How he even got a date, I'll never know. Um, by my Costanza. And then a couple just throwaway lines. George banging on the butterflies in a lane office bothers me every time. They're obviously dead butterflies. Are these real? Like, and you know, the laugh track laughs and, and then whole thing. Uh, he's trying to make a phone call. She says, dial nine. That's supposed to be like yeah, funny office humor. Horrible, we, horrible. We've all been there. Like, actually, I don't even know if most people know that, but I, it's like, it's not even funny. Like, and it's just for a small, small group, which I don't like. You know, funny should be for everyone. So the dial nine joke, I, I don't know. Just I get it, but it's I don't think America gets it. Maybe they do, but we'll see. Uh, so I have a lot of I have a couple of a lot of downs there, but it's 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 Elaine and George. We know what they are in season eight, but I mean it's sad to see um, because the chicken roaster had had some potential. But those two are my second down. Now, all, all good points there. So, uh, very, uh, I agree with the yeah, your ups and your downs here. So, let's go over to the grades. Tony, over to you. What's your first one? What's what do you got? Yeah, I mean, Ohio, Ohio hit the nail on the head. There were potential. I think that's the issue with this episode for me. Uh, we didn't even really talk about Newman. Uh, Newman played a played a great role in this episode. I think he elevated this episode a lot. I think Kramer played a great. And we talked about the Kramer Jerry stuff. Kramer playing Jerry, Jerry playing Kramer. I always love. I, I use this line very often. It's a random line, but Jerry, these are load bearing walls. They're not coming down. Like that's typical Kramer, like taking that seriously, you know. Uh, but it's not too far fetched, you know. It's just like Kramer's out of his element. He doesn't know what's going on. Um, I, I love the the blowing off the poly side thing, like Howard mentioned. I mean. It's a, it's season eight, but it is one of the better season eight episodes. And as O'Hara touched on right there, a lot of potential. There was there was some goods. There was a lot of good. Kramer, Newman, you wouldn't need broccoli if it was deep fried. You know, the whole thing. It's just the George and the Elaine just fucking kill it. I hate it. Uh, I, I just, I'm going to be fair here. And I think this episode is just average C. It's not showing off. It's not lagging behind. I mean, it's, I could go lower. I could go, you know, I just, I want to be fair to the, to what it represents. The whole, I'm stressed, the red light, the Kramer, Jerry stuff. He's already freaking out because he thought I went too high, but I think it's a C episode. No, I I thought you were going way higher. Oh, I yeah. know. I, I, I thought, I actually did think about B minus, but I think I'm, I'm going to be fair and give it a C. I think, I, I think that's a fair grade for this episode. I think even Pink Hats have to agree. I mean, everyone, you, you're not going to get, this is the thing that some people don't understand when we do this. You can't just be like, oh, Jerry, I'm stressed. Oh, that's an A episode. No, dude, that's all you got was I'm stressed. And, you know, a couple of things here and there with Jerry Kramer. But the George stuff, the Elaine stuff. I mean, Newman gets it. That's it. My grade's a C. Chicken roaster, C. Not going to be good for anybody. Good line. Use it a lot. C. No, like I said, I do like that one line too. Again, uh, that's not going to be good for anybody. <laughs> Again, I think about that all the time as well. Chris, let's hear from you. What do you got for your grade? Yeah, all good points there. Season eight, 
Hey, Cap, you're right. If this was a 15-minute episode that was just a chicken roaster, we might be talking B plus, A minus, right? Let's not. It was a full episode. And when two of your cores weigh it down, it gets weighed way down. Now I'm changing my grade a little bit. I had a, I had a little higher, but oh, you, okay. yeah, you talking me down as well here. The cold open again. The chicken roaster stuff was good, really good. Yeah, I agree. And for season eight, that's 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 impressive. It was kind of they took a different spin. I I had appreciated. Um, I didn't understand where he's hanging that sign. I still don't understand where yeah, the arrow's going is. down yeah. things across the street and never, never ended uh, up. The whole but, uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> Seth was one of those guys, believe it or not, Seth lot, very dude. memorable. Yes. He 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 actually uh, founded Mike and Molly, so hopefully we'll talk to him someday. Yeah. Uh, a genius in the industry, of course. But then, and what's interesting, usually these season eight episodes, they, they tie everything in together. This was like just two separate episodes. Very separate. So yeah. there was like yeah. zero cohesion. Which was kind of just, I don't know, like, you wouldn't even remember, like, by man, it was the chicken roaster or the stupid hat that, that her expense, it was just, I don't understand. So to be fair, and I'll throw a, hat, a bone to some of the, again, it's, it's, it's high season eight. Season eight's never going to be you know where, okay? Chicken roasters is a C minus. Oh, so that was you going up. Oh, down. I had C. Okay. Oh, there you go. We got C, C minus. We got uh, your ups and your downs here. So thank you guys. We'll see everybody on your next episode. Thanks.